In the previous two presentations, I took you through what is CFI, Component Failure Impact Analysis, and we understood as to how uh, IT service CI value chain constructed, and how for each CI, we look at whether this CI is important and the lack of it would cause an impact on the business. If so, within what service level agreement would we need to restore it? And to enable us to do so, do we have a backup? And if we have a backup, are people trained in it? Do we have the policy, the processes and the procedures? That was CFI. Then we moved on to the next was system outage analysis, in which we said, rather than just considering a CI for a particular IT service value chain, we look at all the service value chains that make, of, that make use of this particular CI. And based on that, we decide as to what would be the impact if that particular CI was unavailable. That would be a input parameter for deciding as to where to allocate our resources to improve the availability of value chain or of our IT systems. The third component of availability management or the third technique is the fault tree analysis. Now for each of the CIs, we identify as to what are the various failure modes that will actually bring down the service. So let's say I have a CI. Now I list down as to what are the various possible failure modes. So let's assume the CI is a mainframe, which could render the mainframe unavailable for rendering the service to the end user. So let's start off with sample. Uh, let's say that the first failure mode could be that there's lack of power supply. The lack of power supply failure mode could be because of various causes. So one cause would be that <coughs> no electric power supply to the building. It could be because of the power line was cut or there is a load shedding or for some reason. Now if there is no power supply to the building, we, support, we have a generator. This generator should have kicked in and uh, there is no power supply and the generator did not kick in. So the generator was not functional. This is a cause. And then we go to the root cause as to what could make the generator not functional. So one could be there was that there was no fuel. The fuel tank was empty and uh, someone forgot to inform the fuel supplier to fill in the fuel tank or it could be that the fuel was there but there was no one who knew how to switch it on assuming there is a manual we were required to do that and it's not an auto switch on generator so no person available third could be that the person is available there is fuel but the fuel filter malfunction or the fuel filter was dirty or something of that kind. The point I'm trying to make is that for each CI, we try to identify as to what are the various failure modes which will make it unavailable, what are the causes of each failure mode and what are the root causes of the causes for the failure modes. And once we have determined the root cause, Typically, we say that within five Y's, you should get the root cause. So we call it the five Y's. Why did this fail? Why did this fail? Why did this happen? You will get the root cause. And then for each root cause, we determine as to what is the countermeasure. So what is the countermeasure? And if we have it, what do we need to do? So for example, 
example, we need to train a person, we need to have the policies or the processes in place as to how a person, who will be trained and what will be the frequency and when we should rehearse them. And let's assume that there was no backup. Then what amount of resources or what is the money that would be spent in eliminating it. So the countermeasures would actually give us a price indication as to how much it would cost us to prevent that particular failure mode. And since we are doing it for a CI that has come out at a service for a, from a system outage analysis perspective, we know that the cost involved over here for implementing the countermeasures, we do not need to implement countermeasures for every possible root cause. Some of them may be simply exorbitant or impractical considering the nature of the business. But we would need to correlate the cost of implementing the countermeasures with the business impact analysis report as it said that this would be the cost to the business or this would be the impact to the business if the service was unavailable. Now having determined it, where do we dedicate the limited amount of resources to improving the availability of the IT system is based on the theory of constraints. I will cover this in the next presentation. Thank you for listening and please be back.